A lawn of lush green grass is one of the most inviting sights on a beautiful summer day, but how do you get your lawn to look as good as this? We've invited Dr. Jim Murphy from Rutgers University to give us some expert tips on lawn care. Let's start with um, your facility. Tell us about the university here. We do a lot of research with different types of grasses, trying to understand which are the best adapted and we should be recommending for homeowners and sports field managers, golf courses to use. We also look at how to maintain the grass and what kind of practices are best suited for the different grasses we study. What are the most common grasses? The grasses in this part of the country, uh, being the cool season market, we work with grasses like Kentucky bluegrass, perennial ryegrass, tall fescues. We also grow fine fescues, which are more adapted to the shade. So what types of things do people have to evaluate about their space when choosing a grass? Weather is the big uh, indicator there. In the long, hot summers, you probably should be growing something like Bermuda grass. If you're far enough south along the coast, you might want to grow a St. Augustine, like in Florida. And as you go up into more cooler parts of the climate, the center of the country, you, you can grow both cool season and warm season. Uh, grasses. So homeowners have to evaluate their climate, how much sun their space gets. Are there any other things they should evaluate before choosing a grass? Uh, an important thing is if you can get some understanding of how good your soils are. And all grasses suffer if the soil is poor. The more compacted the ground is, the harder it is to grow grass or any other plant. In the worst case scenario, the lawn ought to be tilled up and the soil broken up, loosened up. And doing things like aerating the lawn, applying a compost to the surface will, over a long period of time, tend to loosen it up and make it less compacted and easier for the grass to grow. Tell us a little bit about what's going on with the grass here. We have three different trials here. One is to study different varieties of Kentucky bluegrass. The trial we're walking on right now is looking at many different mixtures of grass seed, trying to find out what grasses are best suited for low maintenance, which is the objective of this trial. Okay, so watering, of course, is an important part of lawn care. And I know there are so many different ways to water. Can you talk about those a little bit? There's a number of ways you can do it. Obviously, you can have a handheld hose, but the larger your property is, more likely you're going to want to use a sprinkler of some kind. And one of the key things to understand, regardless of what type of technique you're using to apply the water, is when to water. And the best thing to do is anytime after dark, once the grass has gotten wet from dew until very early in the morning, that's a good time period to apply the water. What you're trying to avoid is making the grass too wet for too long a period of time. So let's talk about fertilizer. How do you know if you need it and how do you use it? Well, fertilizer has a lot of different aspects to it. The most important thing you use fertilizer for grass for is the nitrogen that's in it. Uh, nitrogen is a nutrient that'll make the grass grow up tall and thicken it up and make it look very green, uh, but you can overdo it. You could end up having to mow the grass too often. You may also need something called phosphorus or potassium, and there are some other elements that are important for the growth of the grass as well. And soil testing will help you figure out if you need those in a fertilizer. We're now in a different part of the farm, surrounded by grass that is very tightly manicured, the type you might see on a baseball field or a golf course. But for home yards, tell us a little bit about how to keep them mowed. What are, the, what are your tips there? Well, first of all, you want to keep the grass relatively high, maybe around two and a half inches, maybe a little more, a little less, depending on your taste. Another thing to keep in mind is you need to cut it often enough so that you're only removing about one third of the leaf tissue per mowing. If you remove too much grass in a single mowing, you'll shock the grass and weaken it. Another important thing to do is to not mow the grass when it's too wet. The grass will want to clump up and that will smother the grass underneath it. What type of mower do you recommend for people for home use? Typically, homeowners use what we call a rotary mower, and that's a single blade that just spins around horizontally, chopping at the grass. It's important to keep that blade very sharp, otherwise it just tears at the grass, which will shock the grass and ruin its vigor and, and health and performance. A healthy lawn is your best defense against weeds. Keep your lawn healthy by removing thatch as necessary, mowing to the correct height, and fertilizing and watering properly so that weeds have a hard time taking hold. That way you can just pull out the odd weed by hand and avoid putting unnecessary chemicals into the environment.